Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Rohan. I'm with the Princeton University Center for Information Technology Policy, and our entire group is super excited to present uh, this project, which is entitled Machine Learning DDoS Detection for Consumer IoT or Internet of Things Devices. Um, so how many of you have an IoT device of, yeah. How many of you have an IoT device of some sort? Anybody? Awesome. So in 2017, there were 8 billion IoT devices, and this is rapidly increasing. By 2020, we're going to have about 20 billion in the world. But this introduces a new threat, because many of these IoT devices that are being put out into the world are fundamentally insecure. We're talking outdated Linux firmware, open telnet ports, and many other sorts of vulnerabilities. And the proliferation of these sort of um, um, insecure IoT devices opens up a wide variety of new cybersecurity attack vectors, uh, most notably botnet attacks and IoT botnet attacks. Uh, the most uh, botnets when you have the ability to coordinate a large sea of like uh, ex um, compromised IoT devices to s <coughs> or devices to simultaneously send network traffic to a victim uh, on, uh, to conduct a DDoS attack. The most famous example is the one from last year, the Mirai botnet attack, which at the time was the largest uh, a recorded DDoS attack. Uh, it, it attacked the Dyn DNS server, and in the process, it disabled many famous sites, such as GitHub, Twitter, Reddit. And especially considering how Mirai's uh, code has been open sourced, uh, these sort of IoT botnet attacks are becoming increasingly frequent, uh, thereby threatening the very reliability and security of the internet. Many of these IoT devices are in home networks, in smart home sort of settings. So our challenge is trying to figure out how do you identify whether network traffic in local area networks belongs to one of these infected IoT devices that might be part of a botnet. So our approach is to analyze network traffic and classify packets in a binary, <coughs> in a binary classification sort of approach as either being attack or benign or normal. Um, and once we identify attack traffic, the idea is that we want to uh, be able to remediate the devices that might be the source of these sort of attack packets and help prevent the transmission of these attack packets from attacking uh, victim servers in the first place. Uh, so to make this more concrete, this is our threat model. Uh, at the heart of it is the network middle box. Imagine this to be the router or the, a, ne a network switch at a local, in a local area network. It's the segue between uh, the local devices you might have attached to it, like um, you might have some normal IoT devices, some non-IoT devices such as your phone, which might uh, help interface with like Bluetooth enabled devices and uh, also uh, there might be anomalous IoT devices, uh, the ones that are compromised. And all of these uh, devices send their packets through the mailbox in order to reach the public internet, which might include um, uh, the server endpoints associated with the IoT devices, other miscellaneous endpoints, and also the victim server. All of these um, anomalous devices are also going to be running through three cl uh, classical uh, attacks, uh, HTTP get flood, a TCP SYN flood, and a UDP flood. We are proposing a machine learning based uh, framework for identifying attack traffic in these sort of local area networks. Our contributions uh, focus on three things. First, we want to generate IoT specific features. There hasn't been enough focus on the sort of unique behaviors IoT devices have. For example, um, an IoT device tends to talk to a limited number of endpoints, unlike your phone, which might talk to hundreds of endpoints on the server. So by Seeing when <laughs> the number of endpoints goes from like say four to five, you can kind of guess something is wrong. It's attacking a new endpoint. Uh, we're trying to create an approach that's stateless and uh, as flow-based as possible because deep packet in in um, inspection is very expensive. Um, so we're trying to not see what's in packets, but the characteristics of things, but or the, the characteristics of traffic patterns. And lastly, we want to create an approach that's protocol agnostic that works for all sorts of packets, not just HTTP packets, for example. So this is our proposed framework. We start with a network packet capture, uh, and we get a stream of packets from a variety of different devices. Uh, we then separate the stream into per device streams. We're using the source IP address, or you can also uh, substitute in your own fingerprinting methodology of choice. Um, and we also do then time bin discretization. Um, so we try to use minimal state to uh, aggregate some metrics about the nature of, uh, or to aggregate some metrics over some time uh, period, like, like maybe five or 10 seconds. Um, and the intuition is that now you can create uh, a time series. 
Uh, now for each packet that we are processing, we create two classes of uh, vectors, um, of features. Uh, there's stateless features, which are traditional sort of features you might find in the literature, like packet sizing, amount of time between packets, velocity and acceleration of these timings, and so on and so forth, the protocol. But now uh, where we try to focus more on is these stateful features that try to use very minimal state uh, to keep track of IoT specific behaviors. Uh, not, like we want to keep track of the number of destination endpoints that are being contacted, the changes in them, also the bandwidth. For example, with a DDoS attack from an IoT device, you might see that there's a surge in bandwidth. Um, and then we create this feature vector, feed it into a classification algorithm, and we output a binary classification score. Uh, so in order for us to create uh, training data, we need to collect normal traffic and uh, attack traffic. So for normal traffic, over a 10, 15 minute period, we uh, basically ran a variety of common IoT devices, um, such as uh, it was um, the e-home camera, a Belkin Wemo smart switch, and um, a Withings blood pressure monitor. Um, and we ran them through all their different network states. Now for attack traffic, we had a variety of other Raspberry Pis attack each other using those attacks we discussed earlier and we routed the traffic through the router and we masked the source and destination IP address to be some of our IoT devices. So as far as um, what our classification algorithm is seeing, we're working with, uh, 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 yeah, w it's as if these devices were attacking each other because it's very hard to actually install Mirai on these devices. <laughs> and uh, we, yeah. Um, then we go about feature engineering. So I'm gonna break this down a bit. So uh, we find that there's distributional differences between um, uh, normal and attack traffic. Uh, for example, if you look at like packet sizes, for example, we find that um, uh, if you're looking at attack traffic, the packets are very, very small, under two, maybe 200 bytes, which makes sense because you're trying to maximize the m um, number of packets you're sending. So you try to, if you have a fixed throughput, you keep the packet sizes small. But uh, if you're looking at normal traffic, this varies because the chunks of the data vary. Um, or there's like, perhaps you can pick up on the distributional differences between uh, the protocols. Uh, like for example, in our uh, simulated case, uh, like about three fourths of the packet belong to the UDP type. Um, but in, among our attack traffic, uh, three fourths of our packets were TCP. Uh, and this sort of can be learned over time using an online training method. Now for the stateful features, the sort that keep track of like maybe say something that's more relevant to IoT, uh, we find these sort of distributional differences to be, exist between normal attack traffic, but we find that they're less pronounced. Um, yeah, so we went ahead and we tested a lot of classical machine learning methods and then uh, we uh, reached out to like uh, applying neural networks as well to see if a deep learning approach can out classify um, traditional approaches. And what we found was that uh, so uh, um, based off of the sort of traditional uh, classifiers that worked well, we can kind of have, get an intuition of the nature of our data. So for example, even though um, all of our algorithms did very well in terms of accuracy, it appears at first everything's above 99%. If you start like looking at recall for uh, normal and attack traffic to get a sense of where the misclassifications are actually happening, we see that um, like linear SVMs, or, uh, support vector machines, uh, which is LSVM, which is the second, oh, sorry, the second column here, uh, struggle, which suggests maybe that the data is not that linearly separable. Uh, we found that decision trees run into an issue where they're not, they have trouble with recall on normal traffic. We found that key nearest neighbors and random forests perform surprisingly well. Um, and we found that neural nets are, even despite the limited uh, s uh, size of the data set, uh, are able to match the performance of the best traditional ML techniques. Uh, we found the consistent issue is that uh, classifiers tend to misclassify normal traffic as attack traffic, but not vice versa. Uh, which suggests that attack traffic has a very distinctive signature that sometimes normal traffic might look like it. Um, most importantly, we tried running our algorithms using features that are either completely stateless uh, or we tried to then add on the, the IoT specific stateful features and see if there's a performance gain. Looking at the F1 score, which is a better metric than accuracy because it gives us a harmonic mean of precision and recall and a sense of misclassifications, we found that there was an F1 score boost across all of the classifiers which suggests that some very minimal states perhaps needed to uh, keep track of IoT specific behaviors. And crafting features to focus on these IoT specific behaviors is needed as our home networks evolve to be more IoT oriented. So in conclusion, ML for network anomaly det detection is effective for IoT devices in smart home, local area networks. IoT specific uh, stateless features can boost performance 
And in future work, we want to generalize beyond the Mirai botnet attack to look at other attack vectors. We believe this methodology or this framework generally could be extrapolated. And since we're working with time stream data, we also want to see if we can work with smarter architectures than just your run of the mill four layer like neural networks and maybe use something like a recurrent neural network uh, to make uh, or to leverage these sort of temporal evolutions in network traffic. Thank you. Questions? Matt Wright, Rochester Institute of Technology. Um, couldn't the, if I've got billions of devices to play with, can't I um, modify my traffic to look a lot more like normal traffic and evade your classifier? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, well, the, an adversary could theoretically figure out how uh, this algorithm is differentiating normal and intact traffic and uh, try to remask the data. So th from an implementation standpoint, you wanna make sure if you are putting this into routers, you can adapt um, the sort of features you're kind of learning to differentiate normal and attack traffic over time. Um, so uh, it is a very valid concern, and honestly, we're still thinking about ways for how to deal with smarter adversaries who understand the sort of features we're extracting. The, I honestly think like the way to really go about it is to make sure you have a richer feature set beyond uh, uh, what we might have right now, so you can adapt to more types of device classes. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. So the, uh, the part two of session two will be organized by Bonnie.